Let's look at some of the basics. The RDP table is split into four sections. We have number one, depth. If you're a newly qualified open water diver, you can dive to a maximum of 18 meters, shown here. Number two is time. This is the amount of time that you can spend underwater at that depth. Number three is surface interval. This is the amount of time that you spend on the surface between two dives. And number four, most importantly, is pressure group. This is denoted by letters. You need to know the pressure group because you need to know how much nitrogen is in your body, which has been left over from your last dive. This is called residual nitrogen. When we go under the water, our body starts to absorb or soak up more of the nitrogen from our gas tank. As a new diver, if you went to your maximum depth of 18 metres along the top and then stayed under the water for 30 minutes, you can see that you would soak up K amounts of nitrogen. So our pressure group after that first dive would be K. Let's say we spent 45 minutes on our surface interval. This is the amount of time between the two dives, remember. So if you read along from left to right on that K line, you'll find 45 minutes and then read down. This will give you pressure group E. So this is still residual nitrogen that's in our system, but it is reduced from when we first got out. Dive number one, we went to a depth of 18 meters for a bottom time of 30 minutes. This gave us pressure group K. After a surface interval of 45 minutes, we ended up in pressure group E. Pressure group E means that we still have residual nitrogen in our bodies, in our systems. That's okay if we've done one dive. If we are doing more than one dive, we need to account for that residual nitrogen. So how do we do that? The first thing we do, flip over the RDP table to the other side. On this side of the RDP table, we basically have three sections. At the top, we have pressure group at end of surface interval, and we know ours was E after our first dive. Number two, down the left-hand side, we have our depths. This is how deep you'll be going on your next dive. Then section three, the residual nitrogen times in white, in the white boxes, and the maximum dive time in the blue box, which should not be exceeded. So let's look at that a little bit closer. We finished our first dive on pressure group K, and after a surface interval of 45 minutes, we ended up with pressure group E. So this is where we start our next dive at pressure group E. Now, if we look down the left-hand side, and let's say we did exactly the same dive again, we need to go to 18 meters. So if we look there, we can see 18 meters and read along that 18 meter line from left to right until you get to E and you'll see two boxes. One is a white box and one is a blue box. In the white box is a figure of 18. This is 18 minutes of residual nitrogen that's still in your system that needs to be accounted for and added to the next dive. In the blue box is 38 minutes. This is the maximum dive time allowed when added to the 18 minutes residual nitrogen in the white box. That gives a maximum dive time of 56 minutes and this shouldn't be exceeded. We need to add this 18 minutes residual nitrogen to our actual dive time of 30 minutes to give us a total time of 48 minutes. We need to apply this to dive number two. So we need to really start right back at the beginning. If we look at the first page of the RDP and go through the same process as we did right at the beginning, let's choose our 18 meters. And now we need to look for 48 minutes even though the actual dive time is 30 minutes, we've added our 18, so it's 48 minutes in total. So if we head down the list to 48, and we can see that we are now in pressure group S. As you can see, although that was exactly the same dive as our first one, because we had residual nitrogen in our systems, you can see that we've jumped eight places higher on the pressure group. We are now in pressure group S.